The King James Bible, the first book of Samuel, chapter 20. And David fled from Nioth and Ramah, and came and said before Jonathan, What have I done? What is mine iniquity? And what is my sin before thy father, that he seeketh my life? And he said unto him, God forbid thou shalt not die. Behold, my father will do nothing against thee will do nothing either great or small but that he will shew at me and why should my father hide this thing from me is it not so and david swear moreover and said thy father certainly knoweth that i have found grace in thine eyes and hath said let not jonathan know this lest he be grieved but truly as the lord liveth and as thy soul liveth that there is but a step between me and death then said jonathan unto david Whatsoever thy soul desireth, I will even do it for thee. And David said unto Jonathan, Behold, tomorrow is the new moon, and I should not fail to sit with the king at meat, but let me go, that I may hide myself in the field unto the third day at even. If thy father at all miss me, then say, David earnestly asked leave of me that he might run to Bethlehem his city, for there is a yearly sacrifice there for all the family. If he says thus, it is well, thy servant shall have peace. But if he be very wroth, then be sure that evil is determined by him. Therefore thou shalt deal kindly with thy servant, for thou hast brought thy servant into a covenant of the Lord with thee. Notwithstanding, if there be an iniquity, slay me thyself, for why shouldest thou bring me to thy father? And Jonathan said, Far be it from from thee, for if I knew certainly that evil was determined by my father to come upon thee, then would I not tell thee. Then said David to Jonathan, Who shall tell me, or what if thy father answer thee roughly? And Jonathan said unto David, Come, and let us go out into the field. And they went, and both of them into the field. And Jonathan said unto David, O Lord God of Israel, what have I, when I have sounded my father about tomorrow any time, or the third day that behold if there be good toward david then it should not then then send not unto thee and shew at thee and the lord do not the lord do so and much more to jonathan but if it please thy father to do thee evil then i will shew at thee and send thee away that thou mayest go in peace and the lord be with thee as he hath been with thy father and thou shalt not only a while yet i live Shew me the kindness of the Lord, that I die not. But also thou shalt not cut off thy kindness from my house forever. No, not when the Lord hath cut off the enemies of David, every one from the, fa from the face of the earth. So Jonathan made a covenant with the house of David, saying, Let the Lord even require it at the hand of David's enemies. And Jonathan caused David to swear again, because he loved him, for he loved him as he loved his own soul. Then Jonathan said to David, Tomorrow is the new moon, and thou shalt be missed, because thy seat will be empty. And when thou hast stayed three days, then thou shalt go down quickly, and come to the place where thou didst hide thyself, when the business was in hard hand, and shalt remain in the stone ezel. And I will shoot three arrows on the side thereof, as though I shot at a mark. And behold, I will send a lad, saying, Go, find out the arrows. If I expressly say unto the lad, Behold, the arrows are on this side of thee, take them, then come thou for there is peace to thee and no hurt as the lord liveth but if the if i say thus unto the young man behold the arrows are beyond thee go thy way for the lord hath sent thee away and as touching the matter which thou and i have spoken of behold the lord is between thee and me forever so david hid himself in the field and when the new moon was come the king sat him down to eat meat and the king sat upon his seat as at other times even upon the seat by the wall. And Jonathan arose, and Abner sat by Saul's side, and David's place was empty. Nevertheless, Saul spake not anything that day, for he thought something hath befallen, befallen him. He is not clean, surely he is not clean. And it came to pass on the morrow, which was the second day of the month, that David's place was empty. And Saul said unto Jonathan his son, Wherefore cometh not the son of Jesse to meet, neither yesterday nor today? And Jonathan answered Saul, David earnestly asked leave of me to go to Bethlehem, and he, he said, Let me go, I pray thee, for our family hath a sacrifice in the city, and my, and my brother, he hath commanded me to be there, and now I have found favor in thine eyes, then let me get away, I pray thee, and see my brethren. 
therefore he cometh not unto the king's table. Then Saul's anger was kindled against Jonathan, and he said unto him, Thou son of the perverse rebellious woman, do not I know that thou hast chosen the son of Jesse to thine own confusion, and unto confusion of thy mother's nakedness? For as long as the son of Jesse liveth upon the ground, thou shalt not be established for thy kingdom. Wherefore now send and fetch him unto me, for he shall surely die. And Jonathan answered Saul his father, and said unto him, Wherefore shall he be slain? What hath he done? And Saul cast a javelin at him to smite him, whereby Jonathan knew that it was determined by, of his father to slay David. So Jonathan arose from the table in fierce anger, and did not eat no meat the second day of the month, for he was grieved for David, because his father had come had done him shame. And it came to pass in the morning that Jonathan went out into the field, at the time appointed with David, and the little lad with him. And he said un, unto his lad, Run, find out now the arrows which I shoot. And as the lad ran, he shot an arrow beyond him. And when the lad was come to the place of the arrow, which Jonathan had shot, Jonathan cried after the lad, Is not the arrow beyond thee? And Jonathan cried after the lad, Make speed, haste, stay not. And Jonathan's lad gathered up the arrows and came to his master. But the lad knew not anything. Only Jonathan and David knew the matter. And Jonathan gave his artillery to his lad and said, said unto him, Go, carry them to the city. And as soon as the lad was gone, David arose out of a place toward the south, and fell on his face to the ground, and bowed himself three times. And they kissed one another, and wept one an with one another, until David exceeded. And Jonathan said to David, Go in peace, for as much as we have shown, sworn, both of us, in the name of the Lord, saying, The Lord be between me and thee, and between thy seed and thy seed, forever. And he arose and departed, and Jonathan went into the city. Chapter 21 then came David to Nob, to Ahimelech, the priest. And Ahimelech was afraid of the meeting of David, and said unto him, Why art thou alone, and no man with thee? And David said unto Ahimelech, the priest, The king hath commanded the, me a business that hath said unto me, Let no man know anything of thy business, whereabout I send thee, and that I have commanded thee, and I have appointed my servants to such and such a place. Now therefore, un under what is under thine hand, give me five loaves of bread in mine hand, or what is there present? And the priest answered David and said, There is no common bread under mine hand, but there is hallowed bread, if the young man hath kept themselves at least from women. And David answered the priest and said unto him, Of a truth women have been kept from us about these three days, since I came out, and the vessels of the young men are holy. And the bread is a manner of common, yea, though it were sanctified this day in the vessel. So the priest gave him the hallowed bread, for there was no bread there but the shoe bread that was taken from before the Lord, to put hot bread in that day when it was taken away. Now a certain man of the servants of Saul was there that day, detained before the Lord, and his name was Dog, an Edomite, the chiefest of the herdsmen who belonged to Saul. And David said to Ahimelech, that there not be under thine hand spear or sword, for I have neither brought my sword nor my weapons with me, because the king's business required haste. And the priest said, The sword of Goliath the Philistine, whom thou slewest in the valley of Elah, behold, it is here wrapped in the cloth behind the ephod. If thou wilt take, take that, take it, for there is no other save that here. And David said, There is none like that, give it to me. And David arose and fled that day for the fear of Saul, and went to Achish, the king of Gath. And the servants of Achish said unto him, Is not this David the king of the land? Did they not sing one to another of him in dances, saying, Saul hath slain his thousands, and David his ten thousands? And David laid up these words in his heart, and was sore afraid of Achish, the king of Gath. And he charged his be and he changed his behavior before them, and feigned himself mad in their minds, and scrambled on the doors of the gate, and let the spittle fall down upon his beard. Then said Achish unto the servants, Lo, ye see the man is mad, wherefore ye have brought him to me. Have have I need of a madman, that ye have brought this fellow to play at the madman in my presence? Shall this fellow come into my house? Chapter twenty two. David therefore departed thence and escaped to the cave Adullam, 
And when his brethren and all, and all his father's house heard it, they went down thither to him. And every one that was in distress, and every one that was in debt, and every one that was discontented gathered themselves unto him, and he became a captain over them. And there were with him about four hundred men. And David went thence to Mizpah to Moab, and said unto the king of Moab, Let my father and my mother, I pray thee, come forth, that I and be with you, till I know that what God will will do for for me. <clears throat> and he brought them and before the king of Moab, and they dwelt with him all the while that David was in the hold. And the prophet Gad said unto David, Abide not in the hold, depart and get thee into the land of Judah. Then David departed and came into the forest of Harith. And Saul heard that David was discovered, and the men that were with him. Now Saul abode in Gibba. <clears throat> Oops. under a tree in Ramah, having his spear in his hand. <clears throat> and all the servants were standing before him. Then Saul said unto his servants that stood about him, Hear now, ye Benjamite, will the son of Jesse give every one of you fields and vineyards, and make you all captains of thousands and captains of hundreds, that all of you have conspired against me, and there is none that sheweth me that my son hath made a league with the son of Jesse, and there is none of you that is sorry for me, and sheweth unto me that thy son hath stirred up thy servant against me to lie in wait as at this day. Then answered Doeg the Edomite, which was set over the servants of Saul, and said, I saw the son of Jesse coming to Noah, Nob, to Ahimelech, the son of Ahitub, and he inquired of the Lord for him, and gave him victuals, and gave him the sword of Goliath the Philistine. Then the king sent all to... Then the king sent to call Ahimelech the priest, the son of Ahitub, and all his father's house and priests that were in Nob, and they came all of them to the king. And Saul said, Hear now, the, thou son of Ahitub, and the son. And he answered, Here I am, my lord. And Saul said unto him, Why have ye conspired against me, thou and the son of Jesse, in that thou hast given him bread and a sword, and hast inquired of the of God for him, that he should rise against me to lie in wait, as at this day? Then Ahimelech answered the king and said. And who is so faithful among all thy servants as David, which is the king's son-in-law, and goeth at thy bidding, and is honorable in thine house? Did I then begin to inquire for, of God for him? Be it far from me, let not the king impute anything under his servant, nor to all the house of thy father. For thy servant knew nothing of all this, less or more. And the king said, Thou shalt surely die, Ahimelech, thou and all thy father's house. And the king said unto the footmen that stood about him, Turn and slay the priests of the Lord, because their hand also is with David, and because they knew when he fled, and did not shew it me. But the servants of the king would not put forth their hand to fall upon the priests of the Lord. And the king said to Dog, Then turn thou and fall upon the priests. And Dog the Edomite turned and fell upon the priests, and slew on that day fourscore and five persons that did wear the linen ephod. And Nob, the city of the priests, smote he with the edge of the sword, both men and women, children and suckling, and oxen and asses and sheep with the edge of the sword. And one of the sons of Ahimelech, the son of Ahitub, named Abiathar, escaped and fled after David. And Abiathar shewed David that Saul had slain the Lord's priests. And David said unto Abiathar, I knew it that day when Doeg the Edomite was there, that he would surely tell Saul, I have occasioned the, de the death of all the persons of thy father's house. Abide thou with me, fear not, for he that seeketh my life seeketh thy life, but with me thou shalt be in safeguard. <clears throat>